get right into it. First thing is we have a request for a transfer from the reserve fund. But this is acting as an advisory to us at this point. We don't have to officially move the money tonight. Um, but there is uh, an engine light on, something related to emissions with one of the vans. Um, the an estimate is for $2,310.47 to for repairs. They're seeking alternative estimates as well as alternative things that they can do to try to reduce that or eliminate it totally. Um, as best as they can. They do have $5,200 in their expense on that right now. So if it does turn into an emergency, they can cover it and then come back to us at our following meeting to, to backfill it. So uh, as an advisor to us at this point, are there any questions specific to that? Any, anything that I missed that needs to be added? Okay. I like that. Who's it for? The Council on Aging. That will be brought back up. Council on Aging. So, Engine light related to emissions, and that's the estimate they have at this point. Should be the higher end, unless they find more problems. So that's all on council aging for tonight. Right? Chief, did you have something for us? I want you to stick around if you don't want to. Or no, I just. Uh, or was there more article? Is that a little article? Okay, we'll get to more article then. Yeah, stick around. What's it? Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, when I, I have a hand up for everybody, which um, the first page is the preliminary revenue projection. The financial advisory committee, is that the right term? Audit and financial. Audit and financial. Management board. Management board, there you go. That's it. Uh, that's a lot of money, huh? Yes. Let's come up some acronym for it. <laughs> and by who? Uh, it is, can you say who's on it? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, it's a town meeting voted committee board, uh, town administrator, town accountant, school business, a representative from the school committee, which is the school business officer, um, treasurer, assessor. That's town it. clerk is on it too. And town clerk. <laughs> that was a town meeting vote in like 2008. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We just kind of restarted something that hadn't been meeting. So we had asked them, and they were sort of already on this track also, to look at the projected revenues for FY18. You know, a lot of the financial people, well, that's sort of a good place to go to to say, what do they hear, what do they think, when they look at trends and they see things. So what you see on the first page is advisory, uh, the fourth column of numbers in it, advisory FY18 estimate. So that is the column with the numbers that they believe are reasonable and achievable for revenues for FY18 from a budgeting standpoint. Um, most of them are pretty basic in terms of the, the property tax, the real estate tax. New growth um, is a decent number. It's what sort of an average of where we've been in the past and where we think is reasonable. Cherry sheet is a 2% increase. That's not right. It's cut off on my page. I think it was 2%. And we had two. Yeah. It is two. Followed on local receipts, um, you know, motor vehicle excise, sort of splitting the baby between FY15 and FY16, penalty and interest on taxes in line with where we're in 16 and our estimate for 17, fees right in the ballpark. Mostly I'm just going to, any other big changes. Things like licenses and permits, you got to be careful that you might see a spike one year, so you want to try to be careful to not, not follow a spike year that you had a big project or something. Out of the ordinary happen uh, in one year. Um, miscellaneous non occurring is just that it's not occurring, that's why you can't, you can't raise it on the recap as a local receipt until you actually get it for a one time revenue, if you will. Um, and then, so that's sort of that column puts you at 34,319,000 or way over to the right hand column. Uh, or you'll see FY18 new revenue range, that's $916,000. More revenue than we would have had in FY17 on the recap. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So FY18, um, KSC, FY18, that was just, I took their, their projections and massaged them a little bit. Um, the only major change there is the motor vehicle excise going up by $100,000 to match what we brought in in FY16. Our policy on local receipts was to use the 
prior, the most recent year's actuals that we have um, for categories like excise, because that historically excise does go down. Um, if you know when you buy a car, it's rated out and you're not going to pay less than excise for the next years. It, it, it works itself out. <coughs> um, other than that, a couple of rounding things. So that gives us a range of 916,000 to 125. And I had a conversation today with Beth and, and Ken, and they were in agreement that 2,900,000 is, uh, is, is fine. So I'm, it's reasonable. It's reasonable. Yeah. So. so taking that higher end, that million dollars, would give you a 3.07% additional revenue over what we have in FY17. Everybody still with me? Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Right. If we go to the next page, next skip a page, you have the information there for enterprise funds. Doesn't factor too much into our discussions at this point when we get into indirects and things like that. We have more of an impact. Um, but we have it there for information purposes. The, so the third page in the packet is FY budget, FY18 budget preliminary, should say, expense projection, instead of revenue projection, should say expense. So we start at the top there, you've got 1,025,000. That's, again, the revenue from the prior year. You have to back out um, from that revenue, we have to pay certain things that we project are going to go up. So if you jump down to the, to the section, sort of, the, what, main numbers there. You've got um, general fund expense proposal, FY15 actual, 16 actual, 17 budget, FY18 estimate. And the estimate, um, skipping down to the third item, you've got capital. This, in theory, we'll put it back to 150, which is where we had said we wanted to plan to begin the, the budget process at. Uh, go to the next one, which is retirement and Medicare. Uh, which is a 10% increase that, we're, that we'd be holding back with the budgeting at this point. Um, we've been running a 10% increase in our retirement for the past several years, and remember we got a letter a couple years ago that said it will be 10% for the foreseeable future. Uh, the next category is health insurance. That's a 4% budgeted increase at this point. Uh, there's some miscellaneous other things on the recap they get raised. So that's assuming a 3% increase in those things. Um, and then small decrease in band and some other miscellaneous increases and things like health insurance work was top. Try to be reasonable in those things to keep them uh, conservative, but also reasonable. We don't want to get ourselves in the problem. So now we can jump back up to the <clears throat> top left hand part. So again, we started at 1,025,000. We pull out of that the five hundred forty-five thousand three hundred forty-five dollars, which is the highlighted items down below. Those categories I just went over leaves you available four hundred eighty thousand dollars for operations for everything other than what was listed out. Um, so this, in theory, would break down sixty-five thirty-five, just to make it an easy number, and that's generally where our budget worked out last year was sixty-four point something percent and thirty. Five point something percent. Or so, um, breaking that down would be three hundred twelve thousand dollars for education. Now, don't forget, education for us entails all education line items. So, that would be blue hills one per day in over public schools, and then municipal would be everything other than the snow and ice, snow and ice line item, which we have to take out of this free cash and all the kinds of things that play into that. Uh, but so the education would be a 2% increase and the municipal side would be a 1.9% increase over FY17 budget number. Questions? Back here on the page. Yes. The only thing that could possibly change upwards would be cherry sheet, correct? Everything else. Because obviously, a lot of several estimates that we make, obviously, so we're not going to change us. We shouldn't. So, and then we really have no control over estimating. I'm just going to my understanding is the cherry sheet. Am I failing? Yeah, I think that. I'm not that's, anticipating, I'm just yeah, trying to say. It. That's really I think that once, once the cherry sheet hits, obviously, it's, and we know that that is subject to change and it sort of moves, it's a moving target. But right now, we're really throwing a guy at and saying 2%. No, no, it could be 2.5%, it could be 1.5%. Right. right. That, that could happen, absolutely. I guess my only point is if, if I was on the budget again, I don't want to charge you that's going on my I'm not anticipating it either. 
I'm just, I'm just trying to make my own knowledge that the only way it could possibly raise is if the charity was up miraculously. Yeah, the charity sheet, if um, another one would be new rolls, if all of a sudden yeah. the assessors, the assessors give us that figure before time we leave, we ask them for it. Uh, they are the ones that you know could right. do some of that. But we have this advisory board that no, that's kind of like they'll. I'm sure that they could come back to us and say that would be something different. No, I, 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 don't, see, I don't see us anticipating any of the local receipt line items. No, I don't either. And I haven't seen the vote going up, and I think this is fantastic that we have this. I don't think this before, correct? This is the first time we've done this prior to the this. Well, this is fantastic. Thank you all. Put work into it. Seriously, it's not even support. And that's why I'm so much I understand it, whoever's listening can understand it, that, you know, we're not going to group will make a lot of right before leave, but in part of the budgeting process, whoever's listening to us, the only thing that can possibly go up is the cherry sheet. You don't even know that until. And even uh, then, it might be at the end of January. You'll get, get a number, you get a governor's number, then you'll get but even now, it's meets in March or April. But the amount of difference is like that we, I would not say the amount of difference is being. But I would say we have an extra $3 million. And I would really pay attention at the state level. The governor right now wants the $200 plus million dollar reduction for the, not necessarily the local aid, yeah. but the budget for FY17. Um, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> so, it's, so this, this, this. So being two percent is, I think, correct. somewhat realistic to what we might expect. I think one thing that we, um, as the finance committee, as we tell you know the, the schools, the municipal side, what our projection is for them to have for new revenue to be able to, to allocate, is that we um, support that and say this is a this is a floor that if because I think this is sort of like bigger bones, if you will, yeah. that if it's less than that. I think it's a point that then we would really entertain using other available funds, whether it be stabilization or, or other things beyond to maintain that minimum amount of increase. Because this is a this will be a tight budget, mm -hmm. um, but it's as the, the numbers are kind of black and white in this case. There's not a lot of wiggle room for us. Um, other questions? Kevin, oh, yes. Just to PJ's point, yeah. So, so the uh, local aid numbers are uh, un there's uncertainty there, but also on the expenditure side, that can impact if, if GIC costs come in lower or if the pension is lower, then you're freeing up some some funds. And that's where, but that's where, likewise, yeah. just to put the other side, yeah. if GIC, if our health insurance comes in at five percent, they if they're building a budget at two percent, you have told them right. that's enough then we find a way to figure out that other yeah. 1% or whatever. And that's a, that would be our commitment to the departments that, you know, tighten your, tighten, sharpen your pencils, come up with a tight budget that's at 1.9 or 2%, but then we're going to be able, we'll, we'll find a way to make sure we get that 1.9 or 2%. Who's the 525 These shaded items from 110,000 to the 5,000. Okay. Sort of the, But, um, I'm discretionary, if you will. That way to put it. But, but if on average you would normally get a two percent increase, why would you budget above above that? Why would you put budget over that two percent increase that you would normally? In terms of, well, in education, there are uh, things that factor into their budget, and a lot of times it's a straight two percent increase. But in uh, with all the contracts, there's steps and lanes, so if people advance their education, they get to move to a different lane, so that has a significantly more uh, higher increase, as well as in a department like education, what can happen sometimes is they have more expense items than some other departments. So they're not strictly a labor department, although labor is a big part of the number. They have other things that factor in that um, are similar to some of our things like we have with our benefits costs or insurance costs and things like that that might cause you that might go up more than two percent, whether it be infrastructure or IT stuff or just supplies and expenses and things like that. So it's it's it, it factors into it's something that they have to tighten up and figure out how to make it work. Um, think, would you say they have more regulatory requirements than other departments? Absolutely. That's you know, things that they have to pay because the state says whatever it is, you have to now do this for your students. Versus a department that has, and, a, and a, I don't pick on anybody, but you know, in, in the town that says we give the veterans agent a 2% increase. Well, okay, that's 
other than he's got that and then he's got some expenses, but those expenses are pretty, relatively speaking, pretty flat. So being within a 2% is probably reasonable, and if we look historically, they're probably close to that 2% um, versus the department. You know. the, the bigger the department, the more expenses, the more regulatory issues. It's just they, they get open to more, uh, more, more increases beyond just the labor number. Question on the real estate line: mm -hmm. Is that supposed to be a two and a half percent increase? So, yes. <clears throat> so, right, because don't forget, it's not just that you're adding in hundred eighty thousand. So the way that the, the property tax works is in FY seventeen, it is you have the base from FY sixteen for for personal property and real estate tax. And then you have new growth that you add to it. You take those three numbers, add it together, and you add two and a half percent to that for FY17. And then you have new growth for FY17 that goes to the bottom. And then in FY18, you're going to take those three numbers again, add two and a half percent, and then you'll have a new growth for FY18 on top of that. So that's why you end up with the overall taxes will go up more than two and a half percent, and hopefully in a year if you have new growth. And your personal property did this program. Personal property does fluctuate and then it goes up, whereas real estate property will, will never go down. You never go below that base. Or where the new growth results in excess capacity is really what happens because you, you budgeted for two and a half. If your new growth comes in higher than what you budgeted, you know. No, because it's that because you're taking you take the actual from the prior year as it becomes your new base. Yeah, but that's not what goes into the recap, though. Yeah, no, you're, 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 you start with your, when you took in what, you're, what you were allowed last year for personal, what you were allowed last year for real estate, and what your new growth is, and that's your base, and then you have 2.5% of that. Right. Yeah, no, I'm saying whatever is over what you budgeted in new growth. So let's say you budget 180, but you end up experiencing 300. Yes. So that's, that's creating, you're doing one of two things. You're, you're actually, what you should be doing is creating excess capacity. Hopefully. Yeah. Other questions on this? So our plan at this point um, would be to begin to draft our budget message for the, for the department heads using these two figures, 2% and 1.9%. Um, and with that, get um, look at our templates, get our template perfect. The plan is, because we will have a budget module and a new software next year, is to not do too much reinventing this year of the process. <laughs> so the plan is we'll continue to use our template for the departments to fill out. Along with that, that office will be more willing to share with the departments all of their historical data, and backup, and whatever information they need. Um, to look at what trends they have and whatnot. Um, but our, my hope is that at our next meeting, I will have for you folks our official budget message that you guys can review and uh, before I can review and approve that so that we can get this out to the department heads hopefully by the second or first or second week in November. That will be the Yeah. All right, we're going to keep moving along then. Next is um, free cash. We had discussed in our last meeting a, uh, a starter for discussions on updating our free cash policy. And from that discussion, we had, there were some questions that were raised in terms of where, where we are today with some of our goals in terms of some of our funding. Um, so what I provided is there's three pages in the next sort of packet is the free cash, which is our first, our existing policy, and then the updated proposed policy, which goes to seven goals. And the last thing we have eight goals, this is seven goals. The one that's removed is the circuit breaker, and I'll get into that in a second of why. Um, but other than that, the seven goals serve in place. The change would then be to move to increase OPEP funding to 15% and reduce the taxes by 15%. So we'd still take, under this scenario, 100,000 or 25%. That's going to remain as free cash. 
pay off all prior year deficits, including the snow and ice, and the other deficits. And then you have this remaining bucket of free cash. Of that, 50% goes to the general stabilization, 10% would go to the capital improvement stabilization, 10% to a, a, a road, and road maintenance and repair fund, road and sidewalk maintenance and repair fund, 15% to the OCA trust fund, and 15% to reduce the ensuing year tax. Uh, and once a stated goal had been achieved, they're numbered one through seven. And once three through seven, another, uh, once three through seven had reached their goal, then any percentage that was supposed to be allocated to that would go full into the next one. So if we got to 10% on general stabilization, and that's 50%, the 50% would then go to capital improvement until we got to, the, to that goal, and then the 60% of those would roll down and roll down um, until we achieve each of our goals and then at that point I'll probably be long gone. Uh, so on the next page what you have is the FY17 budget. So the, the total budget when you take out extra ships. Uh, why don't you wait till I get to the numbers. Okay. So the FY17 budget is 20, 29640000 and that's a round number. When you take out excluded debt and indirect costs. Because those really, the indirect costs are part of uh, the enterprise funds and they have retained earnings and all that kind of stuff, so that should really be taken out. And excluded debt is a 100% taxable thing. It's not really part of the operating budget. Um, it's all for, for specific capital projects. So when you take, um, as of July 1st, um, Beth sent us the numbers, we have $1,469,421 in the general stabilization fund. Uh, which right now is 5% to that budget up above. Um, our goal, as stated, is 10%. So we're about, about halfway there. We need about a million and a half to get to that goal. Capital stabilization is actually at 435,000. Our stated goal is, what, well, the previous page was 400,000. So we're already at that goal, which is good. So now our goal is just to maintain that. Um, OPEB, we've only got 82,000. I thought we had more than that. That was surprising. That'd be uh, and the goal there, I just plugged that number in of 24 million. It's significant. I, we, I, I think that's actually lower than what it is, but um, uh, but it's just a number to put in there until I got the actual reports and whatnot. Uh, so there's still a long way to go when it comes to OPEB. Um, so why don't we leave it at that point? You can leave the part below with questions on the policy and where we stand today and all that. Please. Kevin, I forget why we said 100K or 25%, whatever is greater. Mm -hmm. So if it was 200,000, we would use that. Do you recall? We, we would keep 200,000, yes. Yeah, what? Uh, because as, as we started with 100,000 because we were running like free cash of like 200,000. So we needed something there. Um, and the 25% gives you a nice floor because as, as we get better at this and as the things go up, um, you want to have a little bit of that reserve there. There are many times that don't even touch their free cash and leave it as free cash and have, I think, two and a half million dollars that they just roll and then they'll add, it'll kind of keep building on itself. Um, we got stuck nine years ago and we actually had negative free cash. So the finance committee at that time took a hard stance and said, we never want to have negative free cash again because that's a, that's a bad sign. It means you're not doing well operationally, financially, you know, you're not managing the books right. So this is part of that of taking it and actually managing it saying, we're going to leave something there. But we also want to take a portion of it and put set it aside because if it, if it does grow too big, all of a sudden people's eyes might light up and say, well, I could use a little bit for this and a little bit for that. And then all of a sudden, you know, free cash anymore. We don't have a good fiscal policy of how we handle these things. We're going to see, I would anticipate, good free cash for the next couple of years at least. Um, most of the property, the, the uncollected property taxes and other uh, fees and whatnot that we actually collect are going to come back as free cash in the containers. Because we've already spent that money. The money was budgeted even though we didn't collect it. So now we finally collect it, it comes back as, as free cash. And so this, 
ensures that we continue a, a good policy of taking that money and well, setting it aside, reducing taxes, investing it, um, trying to hit all of the right buckets, if you will, but also balances it that if all of a sudden we get in a position that we have some things that hit our books or things that we were approving for, take for instance this water retained earnings issue um, or water debt issue that we don't anticipate happening ever again, but things happen, that all of a sudden you get a whack for $100,000 or $200,000, you've got it set aside because you've reserved 25% of your free cash and you don't have to go into stabilization and go into more of these things. Okay, and there's no point in setting a ceiling because the likelihood of you being at 800,000 free cash is remote. Uh, well, we're going to be, this year we'll be, we've, well, we just certified today, 1.4 million uh, in free cash. So if we, and we'll get into a second, if you take 1.4 million in free cash, 25% of that's $360,000. So it's still, it's not where we're leaving, uh, you know, millions of dollars on the, on the side, but we're saying keeping that a, a, a set aside in, a, in the free cash so the next year we're going to have positive free cash in it. We've done it for, like I say, since we put the policy in place for probably eight years now. It has been nice because we haven't had negative free cash before. It's gone down. We don't have, like if we keep 362, next year we might not have it, irrespective of, of what tax title is going on and whatnot. We, it might not go up. It might go down until we only have 250000 So we would have used 110 of that free cash and netted down to 250 if that makes sense. And we've done that some years that it doesn't, doesn't always what we set aside doesn't always just mean that that's there and it goes up. Sometimes it's been there and then it's gone down because we've actually gone into that free cash to cover other things that happen within the town. Okay. And there's a lot of subjectivity to it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, the DOI is looking at it at one given point in time. And so if you have a receivable there that you're going to collect in, within a week or two weeks, sometimes they'll let you include it depending on what type of a receivable it is, and sometimes they'll Say, sorry, you don't have it today, but you'll even if you'll have it in two weeks. So, um, you know, it's not it's not always your free cash is not always a, a pure reflection of your financial state. That is right. It is taken at one point in time. It's a pure cutoff at six thirty. Okay. Other questions? Any questions down there? No. About free cash? Oh, yeah, about anything. Yeah, just, I was thinking, so, I, as I mentioned last time, I'm not fully sold on matching the check and funds. Mm -hmm. I'm still not. Um, well, the, the goal is to match. I understand that. Well, okay, I just want to make sure that it's not. I'm just saying, I mean, a lot of the other things, the, this, the one you're matching to is fine, but that's for something that's already been funded, whether we think it's funded or not or not. Point. Anything else is not funded, let's be funded. Is that correct? Am I fairly stay close on that? Stabilization on steps to get the funding, but the, the government, excuse me, yeah. the state funds the check money. So that's why I'm looking at. That's just my opinion. But but we're gonna fund all these no matter what is now I'm getting a little nippy. I like to see the crash tax that go up higher than the funding in that chapter 90 funds. I'm, now I'm just literally talking about the one through seven. Well it does. The the that's only the chapter 90 is ten percent. The no, tax no, 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 no. The, 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 does the order matter? The order matters because right, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yes. I just, I just want to know. Can, can you that. explain that, PJ? You don't like it because it's already funded. So why are we matching it? Yes, that's what I thought. Yeah, yes, that's my theory. So in, in um, geez, nobody's here. I'm saying you want good roads. I just no. I think that. What, one thing that many towns fall into, we're, one of them is that we rely on that chapter 90 to do, and, and that's there to do a lot of major road work, improvements, enhancements. You know, just riding around town, walking around town, you realize that there's a lot of sidewalks that are in disrepair that have asphalt or no curbing, and, asphalt, and, and the only way that you're really going to be able to improve that stuff is you don't have to use your, your road money to do those because that's being used for the actual roads, you need to backfill with the town. You know, we've got uh, the town, uh, the, the state is actually looking to redo Union Street right here. And, uh, and yeah, they're going to do 95% of the work problem. But there's a good section of work at the end that is on the town to do 
and where we're going to come up with money for it and how we're going to do it. And yeah, if it's a big enough project, we're probably going to go and borrow for it and town meeting's going to approve it. But if it's in that in-between phase, we, we end up with this same sort of thing with capital that projects that are in that in-between sort of money, they're not big enough to do a traffic light up, up at Wayne with Pine and Sycamore, but they're good projects that are 10,000 here or 15,000 here or a 50,000 dollar project, but we can't, it, it isn't palatable to do that as it is. And uh, I think that this sort of sets some of that money aside. I don't know, I don't know what study we've had recently that says what condition our roads and sidewalks are in and how much it will cost to get them up to a, a reasonable level. I don't know if we've had a study like that. I don't know we have a paving I don't know if they had an independent study that said, you know, actuarially it looks like a few years ago, you know, the, the X millions of dollars to get everything up to, to a certain level. Uh, which would be helpful because then we could have some goals to say, do this and, and do it. I, I just look at the roads and sidewalks as one of those things that nobody's really going to fight for. Uh, we see it in our own budget that we try to move it from like, 52 to 55 and it was like, you know, take that 3000 and pull it out and do something else with it. So this money would go to an account that's specific for roads and funds that can't be used by somebody else or something else? That would be the idea. Yeah. It would be specifically for roads and sidewalks directed to DPW. And it would carry over from year to year. So it would be set up as a yes. like a stabilization fund or a specific specific So and, and we could watch it and say, you know what? It would appear within the DPW budget in the general fund as a separate article. Right. Um, yeah, I mean I'm not opposed to saying I think that if we could maybe can you look back and see if on that paving committee if they have some if they got some numbers or something in terms of and maybe it was just roads to run than sidewalks. I'm, I'm looking at sidewalks as a big issue in this town. Uh, and I think that, you know, I'd love to see more marine curbing in the town and more concrete in certain areas that states come in doing, doing some work. And it's like, I know that we'd love to feedback on some of that, especially when you're tearing things up to just, hey, extend it to the next 50 feet of the town. You know, we're talking about that. doing, you know, finishing what they've started. Mm -hmm. they've, they've committed to doing the, the Handicap accessibility for the streets on North Franklin Street and on the other end of the state highway. Um, we should do, granted it's a state road, but we should be looking at finishing that job. So, what, what uh, Benji's looking into is trying to reach out to um, uh, the state highway to figure out you know, what their plan is for the rest of it. So, if they say, yeah, we're going to you're on our next 18 months, well then that's great. <laughs> they say it's going to be seven years, and then they want to the time. So Kevin, you asked Beth to look into the paving committee for what purpose? To see if they have any, any figures for what it was. I, think, I, don't, I don't know that they cost of things out. I think they prioritize streets. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if the outside service had did. Yeah, it was beta engineering. It was beta engineering that did it, and they were prioritizing streets that needed to be uh, resurfaced. So not really as deep as. But you still want that, the priority of streets. No, if it's just a priority of streets, I was looking for numbers. Yeah, I like numbers. <laughs> and normally, the funds that. Well, maybe in road conditions, if they have road conditions, I guess on the streets. I guess one of the yeah, yeah, road conditions is going to have. And not only the funds that you receive from the state, do you utilize all of those funds or do you end up having remaining funds it's at a, the end? It's a reimbursement based program. So we don't actually get the money from the state until after we've expended it and submitted for the expenses we have already made out. So there are no extra funds. It's a maintained at zero, ideally. Or usually you have an idea of how much you will receive from previous year? We, yeah, I can we can the average. Which 150 is much to do. Major problem. And we, had, and we actually built it up significantly because we had to get a bunch of stuff in now. And then that's how we used actually to watch that money to get into equipment to help us maintain the roads so they would be in a good condition. Uh, but that was probably three or four or five years ago. And there's only certain equipment you can buy and it has to be specific and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, I don't know, just and again, it's because we submit a request. 
So right. if we don't submit the proper request, then of course you're not gonna receive the, the proper fund that you will normally obtain. So it all depends on how well the request is written or how well you know the information is and provided. The department does a really good job of tracking all of that since I've been here at least, but I've never seen a problem with us getting a penny less than what we're requesting. I think, it always, I think it's always pre approval too. That well, you, right. send them, you, have to have you send them what you're doing with it before you spend a dollar. And they say, yes, we approve of that, and that's reimbursable, and so on and so forth. And then, because then if it's, if it's out to bid, and it's got to follow their process and their procedures and all that kind of stuff, which is even more than it carries over. Mm -hmm. yeah, the money carries over, so if you don't use it, it stays there until you actually call upon it. Um, so I'm not set on a percentage. I'd like to see us. I think it's kind of like OPEP that I have no. But I have personally have no problem with the percentage you have listed for any of these. Uh, so just to go back to the, the last page of the packet then. So currently, um, today I guess we got information from the state that free cash is at 1,448,638. Um, Excuse me. So if we follow uh, this pr proposed policy, um, or even our prior policy, 25% to remain as free cash is 362,160. Payoff prior deficits, and I think we'll get into this in the um, warrant section in, section in a minute, but I had 382,568, is that correct? That is the snow and ice that was voted at the uh, town meeting, yeah. But there, that will change by 57,000. Because of the new snow and ice that wasn't reimbursed. Third year. Yep. So this is subject to change, but it's put in here just as sort of draft form to see what the buckets things would go into. Uh, so without that fifty-seven thousand new need for prior year deficits, we we'll leave seven hundred three thousand dollars available. General stabilization would be um, three fifty percent of that available number for three hundred fifty-one thousand nine fifty-five. The capital stabilization we've reached our target, so now that's zero gross to that, so that 10% would go down into the theory of the chapter 90, which would be at 147.82, OPEB at 105.587, and decreased taxes at 105.587. That's sort of how it actually plays out in the, in the real world today. But there's things that are going to happen in town meeting more, and they're going to change that a little bit to the prior purposes. I just had a, a question on, on the capital. So I get the capital stabilization, $400,000, but what about actually using free cash for capital? Because it doesn't, aren't you trying to keep it a minimum balance in there? Keep a minimum balance. So in other words, if we put, if we have 435,000 in capital stabilization, um, capital stabilization is meant to be used for capital. Uh, are we looking to maintain some minimum balance there? So I think that there's, and we've had this discussion before, I think that there's two different things. There's capital stabilization, which in theory should be a stabilization fund and not used unless very class emergency situation. <coughs> and it should be used as the funding source on an annual basis for the trust fund. Separate from that is the actual trust fund. And so within the regular operating budget, regular general budget, we fund this year we'll be funding $150,000 into that capital trust fund to actually use for, for ongoing projects that need to be funded. Um, the other thing that I don't know is if whatever projects we were we had borrowed for in short term borrowing in our expiring that were capital projects, then we would take in theory those funds from the budget from FY17 and back for those into capital. So a couple years ago, we put four hundred thousand dollars into the capital line item, and then we decided to borrow two hundred thousand dollars a year for projects. So we then decreased our line item to fund the capital line at two hundred thousand, and fund the borrowing at two hundred thousand. As those projects expire, the goal is to move that money back from borrowing into the line item from the, from the budget as capital line items. So the the net of those two things, borrowing for capital projects in the capital trust fund line of equal at least that four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, so my only point is 
this is a significant amount of free cash and we're really not putting any into capital. It would be good to be able to, even if we put directly into the trust fund, mm -hmm. a piece of capital, keep the stabilization where it's at. I just want to add one thing, and we didn't even get a chance to talk about this really, but when we had the state out here to do their review about the community compact, I think an issue arose where she said that we might want to combine the stabilization and the trust because the way that it was voted wasn't, she had, there was some, it, I, I will have to look back at the email, okay. but there was some issue with the setup of the individual funds that the state viewed it as it really should be one. So I'll have to go back and look and see if we have to take a step to actually make them separate. Yeah. I would think that the- I can forward the email to you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the trust fund's been around forever. Yeah. And I think that the stabilization fund was done in the late 2000, late 2000s. I think it was the trust fund that she had the issue with. Really? Or some legislation wasn't there that she wanted to see. Okay. So I'll yeah, so I, whatever the, the mechanism is, I think, but the goal is that we want to have money dedicated for in a stabilization account for uh, for capital that if things happen like last year or if it goes or we need to do something in an immediate sort of fashion right or that you just don't have revenues to fund it but we still want to pay for the fire engine and we don't want that you know somebody coming repoing it from, from the chief uh, that we have the funds there to be able to get through a, a very significantly hard time but that's separate from the concept of having an ongoing funding mechanism which is right. The finance means role is to always fund the capital needs on a regular basis, and if you're doing that, hopefully you don't have to go into your stabilization. That's why that four thousand is sort of a nice number to be able to balance out with what the annual needs are. But again, a stabilization fund, our policy is we never use more than a third of that what's in there in any one year. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up for a big failure in the second year. Try to take your lumps as you have. So, so what I just what I'm saying is, if if we have significant free cash, I mean it's it's very common in cities and towns to have free cash be a source for capital purchasing capital assets, and um, so I, I I like the stabilization and keeping a minimum. I get that, and I like having some in the operating budget, but it would be good to have an opportunity to also have some free cash go to I guess directly to the Trust fund, unless or, or to the trust fund, one should re reach the four hundred thousand. You know, mm -hmm. maybe something like that. But those other states, those towns, state, as their stabilization funds up to the ten percent and other goals. That's that's the other thing. I mean, I know what you're saying, but I'm sure there's a lot of and I'm. I guess I'm just playing devil's advocate. There's a lot of things we could do with this money other than what we have planned for it. There's nothing magical about ten percent. No, there's nothing magical I mean, in anything. Good, it's a good. But I guess my point is, I understand you're coming from a capital point of view, but I'm sure I'm sure a school could come in here and say, I mean, I'm saying there's a lot of good things we can do with the money, and that's why we kind of come up with a policy to say we want to stick with it, and a lot of it's for those we use it for this, we use it all good points, but we want to have that stabilization. That's why we stuck to these stabilization funds. We always have that rainy day fund. Because you start spending on other things, then your rainy day fund goes away, or you don't have it. Yeah, I'm not looking to take away from stable. No, I know. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's why I, I see your point, and I think that's why we committed to making sure the 150000 goes back in this year, because I don't think we gave that last year. I think that one one concern I have about going directly to like a trust fund or something like that is that, especially we anticipate the next couple of years are going to be better years because we're actually going to be collecting a lot of back taxes and tax titles and things like that. So, what did that happen? Um, that you, you set, start setting yourself up that all of a sudden if you put in 70,000, 70,000 into the capital trust fund and then that being used, well, they're going to start using that, thinking that that's sort of on a regular basis and it's, it's not a recurring number um, in the capital, the, the normal capital for the, 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 the needs that we have in the town of that roughly $400,000 on a regular basis for capital, they're going to be there no matter what. So we should really be funding that specifically on a regular basis through the operating budget, whether it's through borrowing money or through the direct track trust fund. I think that from, if there are specific projects or something that comes up that we want to make a significant investment to improve something, um, I think that that would be something to say that's it's sort of an exception to the policy and say, okay, instead of rolling down into the chapter nine this year, we're going to take that 70,000, we're going to invest it into something specific that isn't part of the normal repair, replacing of equipment over there, or 
um, you know, five-year plan of replacing house on aging, or you know, th those kinds of things that are normal within the sort of capital projects that should be coming up on a regular basis. It's something, but we're going to go buy a property and, and redo it for something else, for some other purpose, to really invest in something outside of the money. You just kind of get my logic there. That sort of, it's, I'd like a specific project that we're dedicating that money to. That's a one-time project that then there it goes away and it's not part of the normal needs of the capital. Instead of just doing a blanket deposit into the trust. Yeah. Yeah. Because of one-time source. Because, yeah, otherwise it, it, it becomes, because the capital trust fund is really, in my mind, it, it's an operational item. It should be handled through the operating budget versus, and, and I know we're kind of like, it's fine. You can I mean, go back you could always go to, you could always go to, uh, I mean, I think, I think the, this is where the capital committee comes in. Yeah. To, to, to come to maybe you folks and say, hey, you know what we'd like to do? We'd like to sprinkle town hall. That's something that we got a price on. Exactly. Yeah. hundred and something thousand, you know? And that's and something, something that's, and that's what I mean by something yeah. very, outside of the ordinary, like, the only way we're going to be able to do it is to come up with, you know, it's, it's not part of the normal process of capital in the town to do something like that. But one thing we do want to get, we're going to get away from is borrowing for these, you know, this, these groupings of $200,000 and borrowing. We want to, if, if we have the money, we want to buy it. Yeah. So, um, so that's where I'm, and I want to make sure we have, we're not binding ourselves to really being forced into a $40,000 a year payment when we'd rather just buy something for 40000 or 50000 and then buy something else the next year. Mm -hmm. So that's why, as I talked about the last one, just having the flexibility to be able to, you know, be able to respond. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts on this free cash? In, in, in one other, just I'm sorry, one other question. So every now and then, this there are unusual things that come up, and we have one this in in the article in the town meeting uh, warrant on the um, uh, the rezoning, right? So it doesn't really fit into any bucket real neatly. And um, when we when we later in the meeting when we have a conversation about funding sources, um, you know we. That's something that would be, I think, a valid use of free cash. It's, it's unlike anything we've done. Um, I know, Kevin, you and I had a conversation about a funding source. Um, Beth has some thoughts on that. She doesn't like it. So when Beth doesn't like something, I, I generally have learned to agree with her. But does that kind of fit in what you just said? I mean, I, I agree with you on that exact statement. This is a one-time thing to include the town, capital, and whatever else. So without having gotten into the session, that makes sense to me. Seriously, based on your comments, my comments are like, yeah, that's different. That's one time. Hey, we can use this money. Well, this is a good source. But we're really high this year. That makes sense. So that's maybe it's opinion. maybe it's um, setting aside a percentage, a small percentage of free cash for miscellaneous projects that otherwise would be funded. Kind of is how we kind of put it in our policy. We say we set aside five percent. Pick a number out and says, okay, five percent is for miscellaneous projects, and then people come to town meeting and they say, they're going to walk them figure out what the project is they want to submit, whether it's a capital project like doing town hall, or whether it's rezoning, or whether it's some other thing that is going to improve the quality of life. And if they don't meet it, and we put this in the thing, if there's no project that meets our criteria, that, I mean, yeah. then we say it goes back to reduce the taxes or something like that. So this. That's, that's sort of two very opposite spectrum to say, really, it's going to go back to the taxpayer, or is this a that important project that we want to actually spend in the moment on that? And there's nothing currently in the policy that talks about that, correct? Correct. Okay. Because I was going to ask how that article would fit into the policy. Because I think that if, if we took, maybe reduce the chapter 90 money by 5% yeah. and put 5% as set aside for one time unusual project, yeah. you know, at the discretion of. At the finance committee's discretion, and that way it's up to us to say yes or no, yeah. or it goes into yeah. the tax code. Which is why I like PJ's idea that we um, move that to the bottom of the list of chapter 90. Then the left over shows us that goes into the chapter 90 up to the lunch. Well, you would be so limiting the size of it. Yeah, well, maybe the 5% up. Mm -hmm. It may be in the number 5. That's why. Say for miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. Okay, then go down. And um, switching to chapter 90, going to number 8. And that would just be 
trying to match, but I guess to create stack whatever you always ask to be last because you're never gonna you know, what you hope you will, but you're never gonna fully pay off your tax credit, so I guess that always has to be last. You know what I'm saying? You're never gonna well, you can still always put them out towards it, you'll never decrease it completely. Well that's what I'm saying, that's why it has to be last. That's why it has to be last. No, so I guess I guess the number I think for, I think for us it's exactly that. It's, a, it's identifying what are priorities. what are the priorities. Yeah. Uh, and yes, I agree that decreasing tax levels is a priority, but paying our OPEB, we, we, we have to pay for it now or later. Yeah. It's, we're better off actually investing the money now and getting 8% on our money, hopefully, mm -hmm. versus putting it off mm -hmm. to our children to have to pay that yep. bill. Uh, so trying to find that, yeah. that happy medium. Yeah, that would work. So if you just move the miscellaneous thing up in Chapter and 90 before down. Before the Chapter 90. Right. Yeah. And Chapter 90 even go after OPEB, too, I, I would suggest. I would suggest that as well. Which I'd probably. That I just have one question. Yeah. Um, because I'm like, under general fund, the previous year, you actually had miscellaneous non recurring. Um, 2015. So that's on the right side, yeah. And then you also added full fiscal year 16, I believe. Correct. So why don't you do the same thing for 17 and the um, following years? So on the, that's on the revenue side. So miscellaneous non recurring. Is exactly that. It's miscellaneous revenue that the town got. Uh, which it, was bond, sort of yeah, it was a bond premium. So things like that that we can't anticipate, I try not to get into the habit of budgeting for right. because we have no idea if it's going to happen or not. So the 90, the amount that you see for 16 was a reimbursement from an insurance claim that we put in for a payout we did for an employee. It was um, a bond premium that we got in for debt that occurred in the current year and that's a miscellaneous state revenue that came in that is there's no way to anticipate it so the theory is that we're going to add um, after number four a new category miscellaneous we'll put that five percent we'll, we'll take um what what was item six opeb well i guess we'll leave that as item six we'll take the chapter 90 match and move that to the new number seven and then move the DC tax level to number eight. Yep. So there was stabilization, capital stabilization, miscellaneous, OPEB, chapter 90, decreased tax level. Okay. And we take 5% from the chapter 90. So it'd be 5% for miscellaneous, 5% for chapter 90, and then 15 for OPEB, 15 for tax level. But, and then the miscellaneous one, if not needed, go. If not needed, it'll be all the chapter, chapter, written chapter, chapter 90. If it's not needed, do we want it to go to? Do we want it to just flow to the next one, or do you want to say if it's not needed, it's at the discretion of the finance committee to apply as? I'm going to say I have to apply because as much as like, I don't know, just have to Yeah, because then we have discretion. Yep. Nothing so, like so, 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 I just so, 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 five years, I don't know who's going to be here. Okay. You know? My yeah, only, I like my only chapter question yeah. is why are we funding something that is already funded by the state? Because the so, state doesn't give us enough money to repair roads and sidewalks. But they, then we just discussed that it's because based on the way that we make the request to the states. No, nope. no. No, every, every city in town in Massachusetts, there is not enough money in Chapter 90 to fund the repairs that need to roads and sidewalks for any state, for any, any city or town in the whole state. Yeah, it's not us. It's not us. It's, it's, it's a problem with every single town, every single city. That it's not what we do. It. And many of, the, many of the more wealthier communities do this on a regular basis, that they take as part of their operating budget, actually. You, just, you take in more than enough money to fund your roads and sidewalks. It's all the excise tax. I, I agree. Yeah. Well, you can say that, but. Well, okay, so that's what the excise tax but, is. But it doesn't, it goes all, goes all, the, all the more reason to do what you're saying, because right. the excise tax still needs to be appropriated. I mean, it's not like you can't just take the excise tax and spend it on the road. I'm trying to spend what I need Why not, Tim? Why can't you do that? That's the purpose what? of it, right? The excise yeah. tax. Yeah, you, you have to appropriate it. It has to be appropriated. No, the excise tax isn't set up as specifically for roads and sidewalks. I'm pretty clear about that. Just like your property tax isn't set up for just a property. It's set up as a tax. That is a way to tax vehicles as, a, as an asset, just like you tax boats on the boat excise, or you tax personal property on personal property. It's a way to tax a personal property item, which is a vehicle, and generate revenues for the town that then they can spend as they deem appropriate. That's what we have town meeting for. Town meeting appropriates the money as they deem appropriate. In the past, in my opinion, 
we're not appropriating enough money for roads and sidewalks. I think it's one of those things that we can have a small funding source here that helps to backfill and increase something that we're putting there. This is ultimately, some of it is from excise taxes that are paid into the town that became free cash and now we're, we'd be allocating some portion of it. Um, all right, so I'll rework this for our next meeting and hopefully um, we'll have some, some better numbers too because we'll go over the warrants in a second to be able to understand what prior deficits are. Okay. Make sense for everybody? Yeah, can I just re quickly recap yep. the numbers? So, by a year, 50, <coughs> miscellaneous is five, hmm. max chapter 90 is five, and then 15, 15, that should be 100 of you. Okay. On a miscellaneous, and we'll do it over. The miscellaneous, it'll, everything just like it does now will roll down. Once something is achieved, it rolls down to the next category. Enough for free cash. Warrant our warrants. So this is a draft warrant. So do not expect any votes on this tonight. Just because of that, numbers might change, exactly might change, but we want to get a good idea of what's going on. So if we have questions, we can ask them tonight and hopefully get answers for our follow-up meetings before not meeting. Do we really need 27 months? Alright, so yeah, we're gonna Try to go through these nice and quick. Yeah. Right, number one, reduce the tax levy. That's just using free cash to reduce tax levy. Okay. Okay. Article two, use water retained earnings to reduce the increase in rates. Can you explain what this is? Yes, so I'm going to recommend that articles two through, what is it, 12, um, that 12. before you go through them one by one, yeah. let Beth give an overview of this is all sort of adjustments and right. corrections. So. All right, so the majority of these are corrections to the way that items were budgeted at town meeting. Some of them are new items, so I will go. You're not saying we did anything wrong, right? You're just cleaning it up. <laughs> um, so as an overview, so one, you covered already, reduce the tax levy. That will be driven by your policy. Two and three are both essentially just recap items when we're going in and we're actually balancing the budget. We did do a uh, rate increase recently for sewer and water to cover some debt that's coming out. Um, but these use of retained earnings items are to essentially support the fund as well. So I have a question for you. Article yep. two and three. Yep. The way our motion reads at town meeting is to use um, any receipts, monies, and return earnings to fund the budget. So do we actually need to take these articles to the I believe so, because without it, I can't, I don't have the authority to put these numbers on the recap. I have, so essentially for retained earnings in the enterprise, they act as the same as free cash would. So where you have to vote to use free cash, I have to have a vote from everyone to use retained earnings. With a specific amount, because our vote does say use retained earnings for sure. You can ask, um, yeah, we can ask tomorrow. council, but I've always, my experience is anytime you're taking something out of retained earnings, it requires a vote from the legislative body. Right. That that's what I mean by it, because we did, but we authorized to use retained earnings to fund up to that budget. So as long as the retained earnings, because we don't know what the receipts are, we don't know what any of the actual items are. Yep. So we're saying use. That's what you're saying. Yeah, that might be enough. Um, we do have town council out here tomorrow, so we can check with them then. But those You've got the the R the, the budget, right? Yes. I, it, so it has it has specifically the motion as I had read it. So you can use that and see what it says. I just like we don't have to do things. I just start something. Just because you mentioned life stabilization, retain earnings is in life stabilization. We need two thirds and ninety percent of that. So we put on that because that would be different. Correct. Okay. This is that would be that. Correct. It's, it's exactly like free cash. Okay. It, yeah. It's just but like specific to that enterprise. Right. So are we taking the retained earnings balance down to zero? Not down to zero, no. The respective amounts listed. So just for instance, water certified retained earnings was 886,283. So this specific vote is for 88,000. And solid waste was certified for 142,669. And we're asking to use 60,788. Okay. So it won't deplete what's in there as retained. Did I send you, you folks today the email with the free cash in here? No. No, it's no, a couple no. I will send that. Sorry. I had a lot of emails to send. 
and I understand the point of it is to keep the fees down. Do we know by how much the, the impact of this is? So the 88,000 specifically for water certified is to essentially fill the gap between what we have raised and what we have budgeted today. So not reducing the fees, it's just not, we don't have to increase the fees. That's by as much. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. So there still will be an increase, just not by as there, much. Yes. An increase, was, increase voted was voted by the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for, on both accounts? On both. Water not solid sewer. waste. Yeah, sorry. Right. Water and sewer, yes. And solid waste, what? No. No. Correct. No, no, increase. no increase, no rate increase on solid waste. Right. And the rate increases are effective. Uh, this next this bill. reading, the read, yeah, the next bill that you receive. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on two and three before I go on to four? Nope, thank you. Okay. So four essentially is just a cleanup item. Um, we have gotten our final contracts in from the snowstorm of January 2015 from FEMA, and they kicked a lot of our costs out as ineligible to the tune of the 57,000. So what that means is on our amortization schedule to DOR, we had to go out for a third year, so we're requesting just to fund that deficit and be done with it as we thought we would. Article five, this is essentially just taking the retained earnings in water to cover the deficit from FY16's lack of budgeting on the debt item. Um, it's essentially DOR asked us to do it this way. It's going to be on the recap this way. I have it reserved as it currently is, so it really is just kind of a, a one-year placeholder, if you will. It's going to come out of the retained earnings, but it isn't essentially really going anywhere because we already spent it. But we have to show that we're funding it. So just a snapshot of that. So we've got 800 and, uh, 886,000. We're using, I want to say, roughly 6,000 to get me to a round number of 800. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then of that 800, we're going to use 646 this year, so leaving us 150 number right. again. Um, now, when does that 650 become back as retained earnings again? We'll see it at June 30th next year. On, so, it'll be, on, so when we close the books on June 30th next year, it'll it will be fall back in. Available for FY. Okay. Right. Yes, as long as there's no unforeseen. Unforeseen, yeah. I'm assuming that there's all things stay. There's nothing but everything else happening and that 646 comes back um, 12 months later. And we have a retained earnings to get us through if some other emergency happens to be solved. We do have 50,000 in there for right. something else. We're not bringing it down to zero. Is that we understand that and the way a lot of questions I know. It comes back 630 2017. Correct. To be used Correct. in 18. <laughs> yeah. Um, Article 6, we're actually going to talk to count, town council again tomorrow about because this is another item that we aren't totally sure if it actually has to be a warrant article. But essentially, there was a $5,000 illegal deficit in police salaries at the end of 16 caused by a withholding for the trainees. So it was just kind of an accounting issue that we just need to clean up. It has to be raised on the recap. So. We have a placeholder for the article just in case we do need to have it on there. What, why wouldn't we need it? What do you think we could do? We're raising it on the recap. We have to raise it on the recap, so we may just not need to vote on it. Yeah, if we need to vote on it, then we wouldn't have to put it on the recap, right? Because that becomes part of the operating budget. Well, oh. No, because it was, we already spent it. It was spent oh, okay. in 16. So, so we shouldn't go on it, it just goes on the recap. It, it will go on the recap regardless. Right. I just don't know. But as, I mean, it's on the recap as a, that's it's an other source, but other it, amount to be raised, rather. Will the deficit go away for good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Regardless of this? It's absolutely going to be on the recap. It's right. just the question is, do we have to take this vote oh, as vote. well if it's a prior item that was spent? The only thing I would say to that is, if it is on the recap as a prior deficit or yep. in the other column, yes. then our policy is that we would fund it. Through so so it, it, it works out either way, because if you don't, if we don't fund it through free cash, then it goes on to the taxes, and it, it, yep. bottom line, it's supposed to the same thing. Right. So I would say we should be funding the five thousand, just like the fifty-seven for snow and ice. Yep. And the three hundred and whatever. Yep. Yeah. Except the fifty-seven thousand isn't going. The snow and ice is. We're funding that not through free through, cash. Through the free cash, yeah. not through not through the re not not on the. No, recap. through free cash. Right. It's a prior deficit. Right. right. But it's the same concept of yes. paying a prior. We want to pay all of our prior bills. 
yep. with as much right. cash right. as we need to, so that we can start off FY17. Just paying, yes, paying the bills. The paying the bills for this stuff. Okay, yeah. Get off trouble with paying those. Yeah. Because right. this is a, a, not a, it's not snow and ice. It needs to be on the recap. You're saying because it's a. a it has to be on the recap because it was right. a prior year. Right. That's the difference, yeah. right? So right. Now you have a choice. This. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. It's optional because we do have the amortization schedule. Okay. Article 7, Blue Hills, we got a letter from them that their Chapter 70 came in higher than anticipated. So they lowered a lot of the assessments for many of the towns. Our assessment's going down by about 26,000. So this is just a reduction of the prior vote to essentially bring down what we have to raise in taxes. Go ahead. Yeah, well, <laughs> we did discuss that. <laughs> That's okay. not our so Article 8 is actually related to the same piece of debt as Article 5. So just quick recap, in 16 there was water debt that was not budgeted, so we ran into the deficit problem. In 17's budget, it was voted, but it was voted in the incorrect place. So we, this vote is taking it from where it was voted in general fund, which was incorrect, and moving it over to water enterprise where it actually has to be funded. And this was actually the driving source behind the rate increase. So that it's a, this is really just a cleanup item, but that's the tail behind it. Article nine is a I'm supplement. Sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'm like, so if we are actually gonna provide you with the funds to pay the debt, why are we increasing the water and supplies for? So this uh, article eight is a separate issue. It's the same piece of debt, but it's a separate issue than the other article we went over. This is current year appropriation. It was just voted in the general fund, but it's not general fund debt. It needed to be in the water enterprise. So this article is just moving it over to the appropriate place, and the water fund has to cover. And reclassifying? It's essentially, yes. Reclassifying. It's not changing the money amounts or anything, so we're not funding it separately. It's just saying, you said you're paying out of here. No, you're going to pay it out of here. Exactly. We're paying out of here no matter what. It needs to be raised out of water, which is why the rates have to increase. And it was not two and a half debt? It was not, but that's how it was budgeted. It is non-excluded debt. It is not on the DE1. It's not on the DE1. But when it was budgeted, it was budgeted as if it was. So it would be a wash, but it is not a wash. So in theory, this is now going on to the water rate, but what was anticipated for being on the tax rate because it was budgeted as excluded debt is now going to $6,000 It was a, It was budgeted as a DE1 item. So essentially, because it was budgeted as outside two and a half, mm -hmm. it was... A, zero, a net zero effect. A net zero on the budget, but in terms of if we were looking at what the impact would have been on the total taxes. Correct. Right. The, the total taxes was exactly twenty million. It came right now. Up. It's four hundred six thousand dollars less. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Okay. Correct. So it's on the on the water rate, but less yep. on the taxes. It's actually six hundred and thirty thousand. Six hundred thirty thousand. Because it's the two the right. interest right. and the principal. So without this, so our our water rate would have been just about okay. Um, but because this borrowing was never really incorporated into the water rate, um, we kind of gave the rate payers a, you know, we, we took it out of hide in 16, and now in 17, though, we've got we to pay for it. In, in theory, what we should have done is raise the rates to accommodate the $600,000 in, in, in 2015. So we're playing catch up now. Okay. Article 9 is a supplemental appropriation. We had a new piece of debt for the Great Pond Dam project that went out in June, so we didn't know about it when town meeting happened. Um, it's not very big. The total amount is $7,000, and that's also within the Water Enterprise Fund. So the Water Enterprise is paying for the Great Pond Dam? It's water debt. Mm-hmm. It's Tri Town. Right. The really? Tri Town's yeah. project. Oh, the great part of the yeah. reservoir, not, 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 not the whole book dam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind, sorry. Yeah. Different dam. Okay. Different dam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Um, Article 10 is actually rescinding a total of $150,000 from Water Enterprise. We had a ban for a Tritown study that ended in 16, final payoff was 16. We have nothing for it going forward. Its pay down of 75000 was budgeted 
twice for 17 in two respective areas, once in other expenses in water and once, I believe, in non two and a half debt. So we can rescind the full 150,000. So what's nice is that 150 goes against some of that increase exactly. that you just Correct. did for the debt, which is yep. why we were able to increase a lot, but not increase as right. much as would have had to do without this. It wasn't as bad of a hit. Any questions on that? Yep. Article 11 is also a supplemental appropriation for short-term debt interest. There was just a difference between what was voted at annual town meeting, which was an estimate, versus what our actual numbers are now that we have them from our financial advisor. So that's 16,000, and that'll be within the general fund. Article 12 is also a general fund cleanup item. $60,000 was budgeted as interest on maturing debt outside two and a half, but it actually should be within interest temporary loans. So that's just a transfer. And I'm gonna pass this over to Tim now. Those are my items if anyone has any questions. So quick, quick math is it, Blue Hills has determined 25 grand. 26, yep. 26. We're using 16 for this temporary loans that mm -hmm. we need to. Uh, that's a raise appropriate, right? So that's like a that's like a ten thousand dollar net that we're decreasing the general fund side by. Yeah, there's a bunch of oddballs in here, small dollar amounts as we go through here that we're just going to do raise and appropriate because we had the 26 and it really wasn't worth, you know. Uh, we still have the room, yeah, essentially. Yeah, there's still plenty of space to do that. All the other ones we talked about are basically the water enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. right. So the majority of them were, yeah. So, so, this, so this point in the overall budget scheme, we've now decreased by 10,000 what was initially budgeted for general in, in May for the general fund. Yes. Just for the general fund. Correct. Yep. So, so I just want to quickly go over this water borrowing one more time so everybody understands. So we borrowed. Um, in May of April of 2015, right, to do uh, numerous water projects in the town. And that borrowing uh, results, I think it was 4.1 million. I can pull it up if, if I know it's 600 and roughly $630,000 a year. That starts to decrease uh, with each year. So, so we borrowed it in May of 15. Our first payment was due in 16. But in May of 15, when we passed the budget, we didn't budget for it. So uh, 16 came, and we had to pay the bill nonetheless, of course. So the bill was paid. Mm -hmm. It created a deficit that we had to correct. So uh, what we're doing here is we're doing two things. So we, we have to clear the deficit in 16, which are essentially using retained earnings, yes. um, which we already paid for. Right, so our retained earnings, in theory, without this, would have been the 800 plus another 600. Right. Right. If if there was no borrowing, we would have had more than that. So, um, so we take the 600 for FY16, and we pay it. Right. So that brings our retained earnings down to 800,000. Then, as we said, you know, the state kind of gives you that little penalty. Double so that penalty. brings it down. We're gonna. So then we'll end up. We'll get back up there. Mm -hmm. But for 17. Uh, it was budgeted, but it wasn't in the water fund, so we moved it into the water fund, and we increased the rates accordingly, which is something we should have done a year ago, but we're doing it now. So we took the first year payment out of retained earnings, which is okay to do, you know, it works, the money was there. Uh, and now the second year payment, which is FY17, we raised the rates accordingly, and, and now we're, we're covered going forward. Good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Article 13. It's a, a unpaid bill for the schools working. We'll get the invoice, but I, we have the invoice. We have the invoice. Um, so that's a nine tenths, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So as we've learned in this town, make sure we have a copy of the bill and okay. good reasons why. I mean, if you communicate to them, I'm sure that they will us already, but. We have the invoice. I we do just don't have it here. Correct. And I'm sorry, why is that a nine tenths vote? Because it's a prior year. Prior year bill. Any prior, prior year bill. bill is a nine tenths vote. Okay. 
So the, the next, can I go on, Mike? Yes, please. Uh, so the next two articles, Article 14 and 15, we talked about this firefighters grant that has a matching component to it. Um, and this is, this is the match, the uh, um, Article 14 and Article 15. And Chief, you, you want to comment on, on the match and the grants? Sure. <coughs> Sorry, it's up to the chair, I guess, if you want. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, I'll try to make this, uh, I know we've got some, some new members of the committee and uh, some members that have been through this number of times, so I'll try to find the sweet spot if I can. <laughs> uh, so this is a uh, federal grant. Um, it's a, it's a uh, competitive grant, so uh, you, you know, sometimes you get awarded it, sometimes you don't. Uh, we were fortunate this year to get awarded this grant. The total value of it is about $165,000 is to replace the self-contained breathing apparatus that the firefighters use when they enter burning buildings. Those are the air packs you see on their backs. And also to acquire some uh, cardiac compression devices that are used uh, in CPR, cardiac arrest cases. Um, as the town administrator just pointed out, it's a matching grant, so basically the total value, we have to come up with 5%. Um, that's what those two articles are, is to, is to allocate the money um, for the for each of the separate projects, 5% matching grant each. Uh, and I'll hang tight for a second, and I'll be back to speak again on the remaining grant that has to do with that momentarily. So the only last thing I have on Article 14 and 15 is I, we're, these are two that we're just going to raise and appropriate, fill the gap on them, the 26,000. And then Article 16 is this $21,000 fire department replacement equipment. Okay, thanks again. So um, this is kind of connected to the same uh, to the same equipment from the self-contained breathing apparatus side of the project. Uh, the fire department currently has 24 of the self-contained uh, self breathing apparatus units. When we received the grant award back from the federal government, they only authorized us 20 replacement units. So um, we could probably get by with uh, 23 as opposed to 24. That $21,000 is an estimate to, to maintain our inventory at, at current levels. Uh, it's basically to buy three SCBA units at the same time as we're doing this so that we just have you know, light equipment right across the board. Is that, would those three additional be for uh, standby units or for, is, is it because you have 20 firefighters, is that why, or 20? That's that a big part of it. The grant itself has, um, has, some, has some parameters, has some strings attached uh, to what you, how you have to allocate the equipment that you're buying. So that's a, that's a component of it. The other component is our staffing levels, and the other component is our operational layout, where, where, we, should, where we need to mount these things on the various pieces of fire apparatus that go at the door, so that um, if Ambulance One, for instance, is out on the road at a call, and they get, they're coming back from the hospital, and they get diverted to a building fire that they have, the two members that are likely um, the ambulance crew on that truck have these available to them, so if they pull up, they can actually go inside uh, of uh, hazardous atmospheres without any risk. So that's why you need to be a little bit more than the number of people you have because of the apparatus that they may or may not be on it. Yes. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, so Chief, to summarize, okay. we're getting a grant for equipment, but the grant doesn't cover the actual cost of the equipment. Yeah. No. If I could, it, it covers a significant, it covers 20 of the units and we, need, we technically need 23 to outfit our entire fleet and personnel. So is that three, the three units? Yeah, that so, so, to pig, so to piggyback on that, our existing inventory was 24. Uh, we actually had one that was, um, that was placed out of service because of what it, it wasn't passing. Uh, th these, these units that are going, that are being replaced are uh, to the 1997 to 98 standard, I think. So they're about 15 years old. They're end of life, they're obsolete. Uh, they can't, a lot of them can't be recertified anymore. Uh, 
we've just squeaked through our last certification uh, process. And so out of the 24, one is now out of service. We're at 23. Uh, we got a grant for 20, for 20 units. That, that money that's in, that was awarded for those 20, of that money we have to match 5%. And then this separate article you just heard about with the 21,000 is to just basically go out at, during, the same, during the same time frame that we'll be uh, doing the procurement to go out and purchase three additional to get us back up to 23 in our total inventory. Okay. So it was never going to be 100% coverage. There was always going to be the shortfall, and we just didn't account for it. Uh, so why are we asking for funding? Because we should have asked for funding in what last year's budget. Is that right? Why, why are we here? I guess. I get, let, 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 let me kind of take it from there. Has this issue? Has is this? Uh, need been before the capital planning committee was this something that we knew about it was on the radar of people and we've actually locked out and we've been able to get a grant to fund a significant portion of it and not needed to use our own internal funds is that a way to put it yes yes so what what you said is, is pretty much correct so as i as i mentioned we just squeaked through our last uh inspection and certification so this equipment is um compliant right now as of last year. So our last, um, our last uh, inspection cycle, it passed. Seeing this coming down the road, um, we submitted this application knowing that, hey, we just barely made it through. Uh, this is definitely going to be a need. Let's, um, let's utilize the Assistance to Firefighters grant program and see if we can get an award from them. We were fortunate enough to do so. So had we not gotten this award, I think is where you're going, you would be certain to be, a, be have been seeing me at, in front of capital improvement saying, hey, we've applied for, we actually applied for the same, uh, same grant, um, I think at least last year, possibly the last two years, but we just didn't make the grade. Uh, and so if we hadn't made the grade again in this particular uh, cycle, in, and weren't successful in getting the award, I'm certain I would have been in front of capital improvement saying, listen, we've tried to go alternative routes to find this money for what, you know, is this equipment is really hitting obsolescence um, and there's no other opportunity left for us. We'll have to try to have to spend it on a general, um, general funds for the town. Instead, we were lucky we did get the award. So we're going to get the lion's share of it through uh, this FEMA grant. Did that answer your question? Yes. So Chief, your total inventory is 24. You have been awarded for 23. What will happen to the other vehicle, well, that one item that is not funded for? So if, uh, assuming, the, assuming that the, uh, uh, the town meeting, uh, the select mm -hmm. yourselves, the town meeting, uh, were to pass all three articles and we drop down to 23 in our inventory, we would um, most likely uh, one of those would come off one of the pieces of apparatus. Uh, it's, a, it's an auxiliary piece of apparatus, um, and it probably would just come off there and would go onto um, the fire engines, ladder truck, ambulances, and the chief's car, and that would be a total complement uh, based on the number of riding positions that are in those vehicles. So you would not look to fill that extra item. Uh, it would certainly be great to. I, I submitted it as um, I submitted it as 23, just because that's what what our current inventory is, and I and I thought that that was uh, you, you know the most um, transparent way to present it uh, to the town as a whole. We may end up finding operationally um, that really our system works better at 24, and I'm sure we can figure out a way to get there. They're not. Uh, extremely, extremely pieces of equipment. They're just expensive pieces of equipment when you have to buy them in, in mass. So uh, we can, I think we can figure that, that one remaining one out uh, if need be. I think um, first thing is good job to you and your team for applying for the grant and getting the grant. Um, good job on that. I think that to piggyback on, I think what Mike was getting at was um, these are the kinds of things that as you start to look forward that 
we want the capital improvement planning committee to know about hey this is three or four years out we've got this equipment reaching end of life we're going to apply for grants we're going to try to do everything we can we'll let you know how that goes but three four five years out this is the kind of stuff i think that uh, you know there's a lot of department yourself police library and, and school the big ones and dpw have you know things like this that just especially with in your departments with life and safety that reach their end of certification you guys are on top of it and all that kind of stuff that you know that you have more stuff than i would ever even understand to know about but that you know this thing's going to run out or this thing or that part and there's a lot of grant programs that you're going to try to use but so that then at least they're aware of what's going on um and that if something does happen and we need to replace it at least it's not like darn it you know we knew you guys used those but we didn't know that they were going to be at their end of life so i think that's one thing that we'll ask is that if you can try to stay ahead of it when it comes to that but good job on getting the grants and i think we'll we can try to figure out where to get this money from five percent matches yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? This cardiac compression device, is that the one, like the same one they have like at the high school, that just hangs at the high school too? No, you're thinking of uh, the automated defibrillators, right? Uh, this is actually, is actually a, uh, if they're somewhat um, newer technology than the defibrillators, and they actually really act as though um, they're just an extra person, for lack of a better way to put it, that actually performs uh, the chest compressions. Um, which of course frees up one of our paramedics in the back of the ambulance to uh, start IVs and do some of the other life-saving uh, tasks that uh, need to be done in those critical cases. So, thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. And matching costs are, as you know, are always challenging because you, it's tough to budget for it when you don't have the grant yet. You're trying to figure out. Uh, okay. So, should we press on to Article uh, 17. Mm -hmm. Which is a placeholder. Not sure if anything's going to happen there. Okay. Uh, Article 18. Um, this is a uh, the library is looking to transfer a sum of money. I think it's between five and ten thousand from their uh, salary line to general expense to cover some specific legal costs that they're having. Can I ask a question on that as well? Sure. Short the one there. Assuming they will short them on their um, salary expense, did we talk about would that come out of legal expense of the town? Yeah, I'm sorry. Why is it the legal expense of the budget we have paying for this part? We have to be paying out of their salary. That's my question. Oh, um, thank you. The staff, they have had a change of employment over there. So it's freed up position that they don't plan to fill again. So it's free there. So we thought if we could keep it within the department rather than even to the cost that we may need for other things. Yeah. I have a question for you. It's a little bit off topic, but you never know when to ask these questions. Is there either a state statute or town bylaw that precludes departments other than the Board of Selectmen from actually engaging legal services? Don't know. I, I um, heard that at some point. I don't know. It could just be somebody. You mean that? I'm sorry. That precludes. Yeah. So that the only people that technically are supposed to hire legal services are board of selectmen, and I believe the school. And schools. The schools can. Right. Right. They have their own jurisdiction. Over there. The library wouldn't have the authority to go out on. Their yeah. Own. Just I, and, and they didn't. I'm not trying right. to make right. right. They didn't. They're, they're using our lawyers, and, right. and we're not going to leave them hanging in any way. Oh, but, I know. But, but they mentioned. They said, "Hey, we've got. A, we've got." more money in salaries we don't mind covering some of this kind of uh, unusual legal expense. but even to just in, engage them to, would it need the approval of the selectmen or the town the well offices acting yeah well and we do and town council comes monthly and the different departments go to see them and they just our town council has just been spending an awful lot of time with the library on this but they're used they didn't go out in cowboy well, and hire Right, but if, if they're incurring expenses beyond what the selectmen or the is deem appropriate, what's the control in place for them to rack up a big bill and and then say no, we, you shouldn't have done it that way. We, you know, I and I just want I, I don't know because I don't. I, I believe uh, um, this was a little while ago that we actually did um, have a, a uh, article with the bylaw because people just call in town council on their own. So we actually bill. that's the so we actually did. Right. Pass one that had to go through the selectman's office before you called 
town council because that even that's way back when um, Arthur George. But people just every anybody everybody was just calling, and we were getting billed for it. And so we did pass an article one time that said it had to go to. So. Yeah. And like I said, not to say that this is yeah. not something that we approved or anything. But, but I do remember us doing it. We look at policies and procedures, and you know I don't want to. I look at the chief because he's in the room that he's got an issue, and all of a sudden, so he calls town council, and it's wait a second. We had other resources for that that wouldn't have costed us anything, or we could have piggybacked when they're in the next month and we pay for them to be here anyway and ask that question. And it wouldn't have cost us Yeah, no, the department, as we talk about it, they all, I always get a call from a department head saying, hey, I'm, I need to talk to, you know, whether it be an HR issue or usually it's an HR issue at the department. But, um, and, and in this case, we knew what was going on with the life. It's been going on for a while. and. Um, you know, they kind of offered. Yeah. And quick question, mm -hmm. why would we use the salary um, from the library to pay legal expenses? Because I think I asked you that question the last time we were here, if the town was going to actually uh, provide them with the funds because that's the town expense. Um, and why not use the, the salary that they have available now for the um, public work department that will need the pay raise, the pay adjustment, new position, and so on and so forth. Yeah. I don't know why we're making this. I don't I agree. It's kind of the same question I asked. I don't want this to be done now. You have a legal expense, pay the legal expense of the legal thing. Then we get to the NDA transfers, maybe we use it then because stuff may come up and that's very generous or I'm generous of them to say we'll pay for it. But it seems like we have a budget already for the legal expense, pay the legal expense. And then at the end of the year, if we have to fund it, we figure it out then. It seems like it's almost like they're being too nice. I hate to speak for the library. Like, no, you, if you cut out a position, we have a legal budget already. That's great. Let's see what happens at the end. They may be able to use it for something else. That's just maybe able to or may have to. Whatever. Yeah, may have to. Yeah. And, and the precedent of if it's legal expenses, they should be going to professional technical because corner of my own. Yeah, I just think it's right that they flow through the selectman's office. That's their control, that's sort of the, on the municipal side, all professional, technical, legal advice is supposed to go through that legal line. And then we can get a more accurate accounting too, because here it kind of gets buried. Right. We had this legal expense, but it's- It would be buried. Well, it would be buried in the expenses right. And right now, as I said at the last meeting, the one line item that I'm not overly concerned about, but I'm anticipating potential deficit in is our legal expense. But then, we, right, you're anticipating that, and they're, they must be really good at the, can't I say this. <laughs> they're um, they're just making having extra money. I mean, that's that's they're halfway through the year. They don't know they're gonna have extra money at the end of the year. So I mean, I, I hate for some, another another budget. Oh, so I'm gonna. Have, it's too early. Too early in the, in the season for me to say I have. I'm not gonna need this. Who knows? Someone could get ill. I mean, who knows what could happen? And they need to fund some other. So that's why they I might not need it for. They, I mean, they they may still want to move it into other expenses to buy books or something else. Or don't, don't forget, last year they came to us for several reserve fund transfers. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's and that's fine, but this, this is specifically for legal expenses. So I think so that's, that's, that's what I mean by leaving, leaving their money in their budget yes. for now. If they don't use it at the end of the year, it gets turned back, we can move it later on. Right. But that's for now, I'm using professional technical expenses. I think, I think I'll recommend they change this yeah. to just transferring it to their general, that makes expense. Sense. general expense. Or we could just leave it alone and see what at the end of everything, if they don't end up needing it, it'll just fall into cash. At the end yeah, of the fifth well, fiscal right. year. Yeah, but yeah, they they need, and they don't need to budget the town. He doesn't need to vote it because it's legal expenses and we've already voted professional technical in that. Yeah, right. They, it's it's really, the language here should just be to transfer from one account to another. If they really, put in their expense account, no, I don't just think, 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 think we've moved the article completely. I said we moved the article completely. At the end of the year, they want to. Hey, so 18 not needed something. because if, if it is legal expenses, right. then we can use professional technical to pay those legal expenses. Right. And if they have needs later on in the year, then they can, the yeah, then they can do it. But yeah, specifically for this problem, we can just use I just it. say leave it alone. The, the, this uh, is anticipation uh, of the cost. Yeah. If the bill had been paid, then we would need to replenish or right. move something. Right. But right now, um, it's just, just waiting. To <laughs> Question is, why do they have the excess funds? Because they had a position that they, at least into, for a period of time, had not filled. They so there was budgeted that they have 10 employees, say, and somebody left, and then they had nine employees for X amount of time. Well, that freed up some dollars, and then they say, well, we obviously didn't have that person. Even if we backfill that person now for the rest of the year, we had two months where we didn't have that employee. That frees up X dollars. We can use those X dollars to pay this bill because, you know, and reasonably so, that their department, they feel that they're responsible for their bills that are related to them, which is accurate. 
but we also say that we, you know, some towns that are bigger have an, an, an on staff town council that they could have just picked up a phone and dealt with the issue. We have to pay somebody outside. So that's why we have professional technical and it should come out of that line item. Where is professional technical? Under what? Town Under town select, and when Please. you do that breakdown? Town council. Uh, okay. Town council, professional technical, one of the same. Um, but I have another question. Yeah. Um, because my thought process, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. I'm like, as the year go by, if I have excess funds um, in, let's say, a specific line item, um, do you retain that fund to the end of the year? And then, you know, how at the end of the year, a lot of um, um, department comes and say, well, I'm short of this, I'm short of that. Mm -hmm. Or do you just turn it over to the operation funds for the entire town? So it, if it's before the end of the year, then we can, as the finance committee and the selectmen uh, as well, the, and the combo, can vote to move the money within. So ideally we're going to May town meeting. If money's needed at that point, they'll scour accounts and say, there's miscellaneous money here that's needed for things, and then we'll move it. If after town meeting, money ends up being needed for things, then that's when the finance committee and the board of selectmen do the end of year transfers that will move money between accounts. If on June 30th it's not needed and there's left leftover money, that's what gets turned back, and that's what eventually will go into free cash. Got it. Uh, the department's pretty good about. Yeah, they turn back their money. We don't. We, we uh, June fire drill. Generally speaking, we we I would say that they've got a good process of watching that towards the end of the year, and also departments turning back money. You'd be surprised how much money gets turned back from departments that they don't go out and right. go you know, crazy at the end of the year to try and buy a bunch of paper or anything like that. They turn the money back yeah. and yeah. it's built into the budget for the next 16 year. alone, it was 286,000 that was turned back in the general fund. Including some money from the schools. Awesome. So people, you know, it's not like their money yeah. gets turned back from all departments. So when they, no one tries to spend it to say I had to spend it. They, they, Try to stay within and go Spend on. Spend it if it's needed. Best they can. I don't. I agree. My time. I've never found anybody trying to do that. Yeah. Their goal is not to deplete. Right. Nineteen. Nineteen is um, a piece of insurance for Three Phillips Road, town-owned property. It wasn't not included in the uh, what was voted for in May. So is this something new? I need to find. I need to get the specs of that. Where's, where's Three Phillips Road? It's next to two. Yeah. No, so now you're lying. <laughs> so unless you know what you're talking about, you should be quiet. I'll find out on this. These, these, these next two we just put in here uh, recently. So, okay. Uh, so the 19 and 20. 20 is for uh, vehicle insurance. I need to get some more information on that. Okay. That was for a new vehicle. For um, police and public works. This so, is new police vehicle, and public. Yeah. so this is actually like a supplemental, but... Um, the article is going to read to transfer out of available funds and workers' comp for 20. For 20, yeah. okay. So we'll find out about 19. Okay. Was, was 20, 20 wasn't a replacement? It was an additional, we didn't get rid of anything? New vehicles, no. We didn't get Not rid of anything. Brand new. No, but we didn't eliminate anything? No, one of them was a DPW. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it was a DPW. They got like uh, an auction. Right. Okay. Uh, 21 is a, is a placeholder. <laughs> no more discussion. <laughs> 22. 22 is the uh, rezoning project for the town. Um, as many of you know, our, our zoning bylaws are well over 50 years old um, with a series of amendments. And um, it would be a good. Uh, uh, proactive um, exercise to update these and to go through them line by line and to look at lot size and you know um, some of the mixed use opportunities that we might want to incorporate so uh, we the economic advisory board um, has met with uh, Mark Bobrowski who did the overlay district in the center here and um, the planning board um, is engaged in this as well because it really is going to be a planning board project. Um, and uh, the estimate is, is 30, 35,000 for the, for the 
rezoning another 10,000 for the mapping that's associated with it. And then 3,000 is uh, a contingency. Placeholder. Contingency, yeah. Questions on that? I think all these will come back. We're going to go through all of them and then we're going to have some ideas on funding and different ideas. So. Yeah, so this is the one, just to go back, that I, I thought was unique. It really isn't yeah. capital. It would be good, free cash would be a, a, a good logical source of funding for this here. Okay, so all these raise and appropriates, these are FY17 items, but since we already have an FY17 budget, we need to find funding for all of these items. Uh, well, yeah, for the ones that we said are just going to be raised and appropriate, yeah. they're small amounts. We can absorb it into the recap and the, and the tax rate. We're, we're, we're already reducing it by the 26000 from from Blue Hills. And I think the ones that we're going to do raise and appropriate add up to like 31 or 32 or something like that. Whatever it is, it's immaterial. Yeah. So those are, those are things that we're just going to say raise and appropriate. Okay. This here, which we just talked about, that's not really for raising. Needs a program. source. We need a source for that. Okay. So, uh, article. Is that good? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, article twenty-three repairs at town hall. So this is a um, sort of a continuation of some of the work that was done last year. Uh, the exterior of the building was repointed and cleaned and really fully inspected um, <clears throat> last year. And there was one area that they identified that was sort of a, a, a risky spot that we needed to pay attention to. It's, a, it's the top right corner of Town Hall. And you can only tell with binoculars, but the granite's starting to just pull a little bit. So what they did last year when they were up doing their, their thing is they, they see water, made it watertight. But they said, you know, you really, it's not urgent. It's not going to fall down tomorrow, knock on wood, but you don't want to just ignore it. So uh, we got a price to redo that top corner uh, of $10,000, uh, an estimate. So uh, that's 10,000. And then we also want to replace the windows in the rear of Town Hall. We, we did the, the ones over in the, um, the, um, uh, the heritage room. Um, and now if you go down the offices, they're all drafty and really in tough shape. So uh, we also, so that's, that's what the 20000 that's what this article is about. Now, having said that, we do have a grant application at the ready for our $100,000 earmark, um, which has been approved by the legislature. And the question is whether or not the governor is going to release the funds. So on the one hand, yeah, things don't look good. On the other hand, it's only $100,000. So it's going to be a, 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 a debate, I suppose, far above my pay grade. But, so if that were to happen, that's, that would be the funding source. But we don't really want to wait and see, um, and we want to be able to get the work done, you know, whether, you know, depending on the weather, whether they do it before the winter, um, from the, uh, subsequent to town meeting, but before the heavy winter, or if it waits till the spring. It is the, the 10,000 would be enough for the, for the rear windows? Is there, are there any, um, uh, we have, what do we have for heat, oil, gas, what do we do? Gas. Gas. Any, any, any programs with our gas provider that we're, we're becoming more energy efficient that they can backfill some money on that? Not to say that anywhere close to the whole thing, but something to take yeah, a look at. Yeah, we could have them come out and do an audit and, and check out. They mostly will focus on light bulbs, which is okay too. That's all right. Um, well, I think the electric company will focus on light bulbs, but the gas company might focus on something else. And I don't know if, if it's or if it's, just, it's one energy audit, but then they do, do you got to go with the different companies for the different things. And I don't know. I'm just yeah, a yeah, yeah. side yeah. sidebar yeah, yeah. point. Um, so the don't I don't have a funding source for this. Uh, I will say this. So it's below the capital threshold. Yeah. However, I did have a meeting with the Capital Improvement Committee for other things, and I mentioned it to them, and they, they, they voted to support it, you know, just as a, a general, you know, yeah, we agree, it's below our threshold, but we see the, we see the value in it. All right. 
24, you, is, is that still being tweaked? It is. Okay, so 24 is being tweaked. We'll leave that alone. 25, 26, and 27 are ours. Um, so there's two main articles that need funding beyond raise and appropriate or that within that, that small window. One is 23, the repairs to town hall. One is 22. Uh, so I just, yeah. What about 16? That's 21,000. That doesn't fall under yeah. 26. Is that yeah, right? That's another one. Right. That's another three. Those are those 14, those 15, 20, 15 right? 16. Everything else funded 26. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, so I'll keep you on order. Well, 14 and 15 weren't from raising appropriate, the small amount you had said? 14 and 15 are. 14 15 are. 16. 16 is not. 16, right. so 16 is not. So 16 is not. And repairs at town hall is not. One thing I, my, one theory I have on repairs at town hall is we have $435,000 in the capital stabilization, which is $35,000 over our goal. Do we not, say, pull 20000 out of capital stabilization to take care of these kinds of issues? It doesn't have to meet the threshold. It's just we're taking on capital stabilization and funding this article specifically. But question, yeah. how, how long, I mean, how long are you anticipating receiving the award from the state? Um, well, I'll tell you this, the legislature's not coming back this calendar year. So I wouldn't think that he's going to release any funds until they come back and make their, their resolution on what the actual reductions are going to yeah, be. Yeah, so, so yeah. that's a good point. I, we probably wouldn't do this unless something changed drastically that they, they say, geez, it's worse than you thought. We'd probably wait till the spring so that if we get those funds, we, would, we could use them. And we wouldn't waste those funds. Even if they give them to us in May, we'll figure it out. That's what I was going to say. Do, do you not have a list of projects to meet that 100000 irrespective of the windows yes. in that? If they gave it to me five times a year, I could meet that threshold. <laughs> it's because here and the library all as well. Yes. Yes. And the Council on Aging can you use it for? Yeah. Because my only concern is uh, if you make exception once, then just to say, or what to say that you won't need other exceptions um, throughout the year for small amounts just because we can. Yep. Um, so that was, that was on that one. On 22 and 16. 16, where do we stand with ambulance um, reserve? We'll have enough to transfer what was already budgeted would have to do an outlook to see where we might be, if we'll have anything extra, but I okay. don't know the answer to that now. If we okay. Take it. Uh, it's always the first place to look to when I can look fire at something. Yep. I can look at it tomorrow. Um, and then one theory I had from, and I know Beth doesn't like this, I guess now. Tim and I liked it last night. I didn't week. get to explain this. Okay. I didn't um, know it really fell into something that was unforeseen if we're planning. Well, it's not, that's why it's not, it's not the finance committee. My theory is the finance committee, we have $125,000 in the reserve fund. Um, so I'd ask sort of generically speaking, how police, fire, we're doing on their budgets, where things seem to be. We haven't, other than this, um, this one before us tonight, haven't had any reserve fund transfer requests, haven't heard about any major issues going on in the town. Uh, unemployment looks good, which is, been an issue in the past. Um, so if we took 48000 out of the reserve fund, if town meeting took $48,000 and reduced the reserve fund from the 125000 budget to 78000 mm -hmm. Yeah. My math just works, 77000 77, um, To fund this article, does, is, that, is the seventy seven still enough to get us through the end of the year? What are, our, what are our thoughts on that? And then this funds this sort of it's not, it's not be, it wouldn't be coming before the finance committee as an unforeseen, it's not an unforeseen issue, but it's finance, it's the town meeting reducing the reserve fund by the 48,000 to fund that article. The first question I have is we have 125,000 in there last year, and how much do we have left over? That would be I don't know the specific answer, but you had a decent amount left over. No that would be the first. Completed. And that's fine, that's the first question. I think, yeah. we've, we've, I think generally we've been in a good position the last couple of years. I know that in a couple of drivers, we had unemployment that we were able to use 
for moving stuff. We had some yeah. health insurance. We I'll be honest. I don't remember moving up to 125. And I was glad that 75. So that's yeah. why I'm. I think that's all we expended last year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think so. Because I'm thinking the same thing. I remember it was always 75. But I don't remember moving it to 125. And it, it still would have, have like because we're doing it. Oh, you have it? That's yeah. the same question I said. I, uh, Tim is just like, I don't remember seven that much in it. Yeah, so FY15, you ended the year turning back 60 grand. And FY16, you ended the year turning back 61 grand. So, so this, this allows us to. Yeah. And because we're doing it now, in theory, we haven't, you know, we would have 77,000 to get us to the Maytown meeting. And then if it something needs to happen at the Maytown meeting and some other funding sources, we can do something else. So we really would just need to deal with emergencies between <coughs> now and May. Right. Um, and now I'm confused with one thing though. You said the 48,000, that's the zoning, that's not. That's the zoning, that's leaving alone the, the, the chief's issue for the moment. Uh, I don't have an idea on that one yet. Well, I wanna go back to then, I would use the free cash for the zoning because it's a one time blah, whatever. The 21,000, uh, using your suggestion. I think that makes, to me, that makes more logical sense to me. It's an ongoing budget thing. It's in the budget, whatever else. It's forty-eight thousand. Is a one-time or made up for five years? Find a fiscal what we were discussing. If we can, we can debate it next year, time when we have the um, final plan. But this kind of fits into that miscellaneous category. I don't know if we're going to have five percent going to make it, but it's kind of like we're going to have to readjust our numbers anyway based on the fifty-seven thousand. So once we get the final numbers, I think that's where the zoning should come from. Free cash, because it's, it's it's clearly. We don't have it built in. I don't know if we should. Be, we wanted to be disciplined with the free cash, and the first one has said, you know, that whatever else. But then at the same point, we got to have some kind of flexibility when things come up, such as downtown improvements. It's not really funding an operating budget. Funding the rezoning is not funding operating. Oh, absolutely. Not. That's what I'm saying. We don't want to use that for that. I agree with that. This is. I think it fits perfectly. It's not an operating budget. It's not a. No one can be current over the rezoning agreement. So I think it really is a. That's when they would say using free cash for. I don't like using it if it's the reason I want to use the snow one, whatever. The way I was saying for sidewalk, because that's kind of a recurring thing. And every year thing. That's I think this is the complete opposite. So mm -hmm. we don't have to debate this. And I think we end up pretty close to that. We would have on the on the five percent theory, we would have a money five thousand. Uh is that is that what it is? That makes sense to me. I think it really is an extreme. I'd rather do it that way. It's, it's something you don't do. And, and I agree with the philosophy yeah. that you don't want to be opening the door right. on free cash. Right. But I, I don't really think you are on this particular case. No, I, th I mean, we, we, we went over that. I think the 5% the, the this meets that exactly what we're discussing. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think the 20000 out of the stabilization is where you look at something up. Fits to the exceptional that it's a capital expense. It's an, I don't think we use the word unforeseen, but it's something that it's not going to be capital. It's twenty grand, and that's for stabilization. It's just that 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 urgent need to fix something that we didn't really plan on. But that's not unforeseen, nor is it an urgent. It's not falling off. It's well, not I don't want to wait for it to fall and hit somebody before I fix and it. And a couple of months is not is no. Not I don't. Hold on a second. I agree with a couple of months thing. Though. I do think maybe we should wait till the spring. That just, I agree. With maybe waiting the spring and not voting it now. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I don't meet urgent sense. We had to do it next week. I see coming out of stabilization makes sense to me, but maybe not right away. Maybe we can wait a couple months. Right. Yeah, but I don't want to wait till the May town meeting. Oh. No, you want the flexibility. Yeah, yeah. You want to do, do it when, when the time is right when you need to. Um, and I think that just logically from the capital stabilization, we've met our goal. We've we surpassed our goal. That's why we would be using the capital stabilization to bring it in line with the goal. Um, and again. We're pulling it out of the stables, out of the capital stabilization. It goes into a specific article, which then is at the discretion of the article presenter um, mm -hmm. to, you know, spend when and if they think it's appropriate. And if not, they can return the money, and it goes back to free cash at that point, which would then follow into our policy or whatnot. Right. So does that kind of encapsulate everything? Yes. Really good for the moment. So. For our next meeting, I have to work on finalizing the free cash policy. It's what we discussed tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, finalizing the, the funding of, of the articles, especially the prior year deficits, so that then we can apply that free cash policy and see exactly where the numbers flow. Mm -hmm. um, theories are for the chief's $21,000 need, it would come out of, we would transfer from reserve fund to the special article. For the um, uh, zoning for 35,000 of the zoning or whatever amount we can fund would come from free cash. The balance to come from 
reserve fund? Probably, yeah. Does that make sense to the committee? 5% of free cash, if you go that way with your policy, would be enough. It'd be around 72000 no, it's not five percent of the total. It's the five percent of the available. It's only about thirty-five thousand. Thirty-five. So yeah, yeah. that's seventy rolled down. Roughly, it's going to be a little bit less because we yeah. have to pay some more prior. I'm just right. But whatever that is, so it's the roughly thirteen, fourteen thousand would come from reserve as well. So we'd be taking thirty-five thousand reserve to fund stuff, yeah. plus using some of this miscellaneous money to fund it. Which is, would be nice and uh, clean. Um, so is that going to be another article that we need to get on here? No, it'll be within. So this week, and then the twenty thousand from capital stabilization for repairs at town hall. I'm saying moving the money to that miscellaneous bucket. Um, no, because the miscellaneous bucket will just be done here. When we say the funding source is thirty-five thousand in theory from free cash, and thirteen thousand from so free cash is just it's a bucket of money, and then we take that bucket and, and allocate it. Yeah, we're allocating articles. the bucket. We don't just say which bucket we're taking out of. We're just taking out of free cash. So our so Article One. Take some some portion of that to pay to pay down the tax levy. Article twenty three takes some of it, puts it in state, or twenty five puts it into stabilization. So that's a 26, bucket. Twenty six puts it into that. Well, we and we wouldn't be putting anything into that into capital bucket this year, yeah. and then we put some into the OPEP bucket, and we probably would at this point would just leave chapter ninety money in the free cash until we figure out how to establish the the right fund or article or however the right way to do that is. And we can do that in May. So we'd leave 25% of free cash plus that 5% holder for chapter 9 match. Meetings. We don't have any on the books. Well, again, I don't think we can meet next Monday. A suggestion on the chapter 90 match title. Um, why not just go for, I mean, we talked about sidewalks. That's what we're thinking we'd use it for. Why not just call it, you know, sidewalk fund? Oh, we have one. We found one, honestly, though. Well, we, we, have, we have street and sidewalk. We have it's roads and sidewalks. Yeah, roads and sidewalks. Right now. And and I'd like to, and I don't because I don't want to I don't want to restrict it that what exactly part of the road are they working on or you know it's just sort of but I my my hope would be that we do more sidewalk work. But that's me. I mean, I'm I'm one person, uh, and I'm not DPW director or selectman or whatever. So I think that we put it into a fund that with the intent of roads and sidewalks. Long-term maintenance or something, whatever you want. I think we just use the chapter ninety thing, so we know how high we can we want to go. Can chapter ninety? Not going to go higher than a match. Okay, if we have five percent, but not higher than the match. Can chapter ninety be used on sidewalks? Yeah. Worst case, we're just using that, but we can still call it rodents. Right. I, I just want to make sure we whatever right. we, whatever we call it. Oh, but, but what's our limit? The chapter ninety. Whether it has to be a special fund no. or it can just be an article or and how the heck we, we just move it over. At the end of the year, we just move it over to the road and sidewalk. Uh, but I think, but then it would get turned back every year. And my my philosophy is just in the point. general that's that's that, it, that it stays there because it might right. not be used that's for two or three point. years. Yeah, because we might want to, we want to build it up so they can use it when they use it. When the project is right. Gotcha. Um, so we can't meet next Monday. I can. Well. You're not going to be trick-or-treating? No. I'm not going to treat next Monday, no. So you have to come in a costume, though. The following Monday is the day before the election, but I think we need to meet. Uh, the do we want to meet on an off night, or if we meet... <sighs> not Wednesday. I'm going to good. Tuesday. Next Tuesday? I'm just, he said off. Mike is one Tuesday, never mind. <laughs> well, Saints Day. Monday's work church. for me. No, you just, you just sent me a nasty look. I don't care whatever we mean now. So <laughs> we mean November 7th. And then again, November 14th. 11 7, 11 14? Yeah. Town meeting is 11 16. Yep. We want to meet at least Tuesday after that, right? I'm sorry, say that again? Do we need to meet Tuesday after town meeting? No. Um, special town meeting is. Seven days. Seven days. No. Special is 14, the regular seven is I get a Regular town meeting is seven days. Special is 14 days. That the warrant gets issued. But, but 11 7 is. But as our recommendations, we'll get them out. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not really uh, concerned about that. Uh, and then if we'll meet November 28th, and then once in December. What's the 20th? Okay, never mind. 
It's a Monday. It's a Monday after Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving. Okay, that's fine. And then um, the 12th, which would be two weeks after that. That would get us through the calendar year. So 7, 14, 16. Six, 7, 16 is going to be um, town meeting, so that's going to be at the high school. Yeah. 28 and then 12, 12. Yes. And the 12th meeting, December 12th, we'll have the um, CPA that is handling the pope of all the items for the, from the school building committee. He'll address this. I don't know if we want something more than that. Do you, I think that's nice to have him, but I also thought it would be nice to have um, someone from um, Consigli yeah, to MSMA. maybe show us, give him a little uh, the tour. Yeah. You know, that would be good. You the, mean the, the, the tour on the wall, not actually going through the building, right? No, you'll see that okay. they have cold a, on they have the drone or whatever. Uh, yeah, because it's not. I mean, that's that would be nice for us. We won't have too much on the agenda right. at that point. So, yeah, right, the people are asking, so it'll be good. This is the place to talk about it. Email Joel before I, because I'll forget. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, December twelfth. I appreciate it, Tim. Thank you. You say in December, right? December. December. Yeah, December. Yeah, Joel. Yeah, like, and we have my I'll remind the committee that when we have a guest coming. And we try to make sure we're here prompt at seven o'clock so we can start on time when we have a guest and from outside um no because the miscellaneous bucket will just be done here when we say the funding source is thirty-five thousand in theory from free cash and thirteen thousand from so free cash is just it's a bucket of money and then we take that bucket and, and allocate yeah, it yeah we're allocating articles. the bucket we don't just say which bucket we're taking out of. we're just taking out of free cash so our so article one Take some some portion of that to pay to pay down the tax levy. Article 23 takes some of it, puts it in state, or 25 puts it into stabilization. So that's a bucket. 26 puts it into that. Well, we and we wouldn't be putting anything into that into capital bucket this year, yeah. and then we put some into the OPEP bucket, and we probably would at this point would just leave the chapter 90 money in the free cash until we figure out how to establish the the right fund or article or however the right way to do that is. And we can do that in May. So we'd leave 25% of free cash plus that 5% holder for track and writing match. Meetings. We don't have any on the books. Well, yeah, I don't think we can meet next Monday. Is a suggestion on the chapter 90 match title. Um, why don't you just go, for, I mean, we talked about sidewalks. That's what we're thinking we'd use it for. Why not just call it, you know, sidewalk fund? Oh, we had one. You found one, honestly, yeah. Well, we, no we have street and sidewalk. We have it's roads and sidewalks. Yeah, roads and sidewalks. Yeah, sidewalks. And and I'd like to, and I don't because I don't want to I don't want to restrict it that what exactly part of the road they're working on or you know it's just sort of but I my my hope would be that we do more sidewalk work. But that's me. I mean I'm the, I'm one person uh, and I'm not DPW director or selectman or whatever. So I think that we put it into a fund that with the intent of roads and sidewalks long-term maintenance or something, whatever you want. Maybe just use the chapter 90 thing so we know how high we can we want to go. Can chapter 90 be used higher than a match? Okay, if we have 5%, but not higher than the match. Can chapter 90 be used on sidewalks? Worst case, we're just using that, but we can still call it rodents. Right, I just want to make sure we, whatever we call it. But what's our limit, the chapter 90? Whether it has to be a special fund or it can just be an article or how the heck we just move it over. At the end of the year, we just move it over to the road and sidewalk. But I think, but then it would get turned back every year. And my philosophy is just in the general office that it stays there because it might not be used for two or three years. Yeah, because we might want to build it up so they can use it when they use it. When the project is right. Gotcha. Um, so we can't meet next Monday. I can. Well. You're not going to be trick-or-treating? No. I'm not going to trick or treating next Monday, no. So you have to come in a costume, though. The following Monday is the day before the election, but I think we need to meet. Um, the do we want to meet on an off night, or if we meet? <sighs> not Wednesday. I'm just saying good. Tuesday. Next Tuesday? I'm just, he said off. Mike doesn't want to Tuesday, never mind. <laughs> well, thanks, Monday's work church. for me. No, you just, you just sent me a nasty look. I don't care whatever we mean now. <laughs> so we mean November 7th. And then again, November 14th. 11-7, 11-14? Yeah. Town meeting. November 14. Yeah. Town meeting is 11-16. Yep. 
Do we need these two set up? I'm sorry, say that again? Do we need to meet two set up town meeting? No. Um, special town meeting is seven days. Seven days. Okay. Oh, specials. Okay. The specials 14, the regular seven, is that exactly? Regular town meeting is seven days. Specials 14 days. That the warrant gets issued. But, but 11 7 is. But as our recommendations, we'll get the ballot. That's yeah, fine. That's yeah, fine. I'm really uh, concerned about that. Uh, and then if we'll meet November 28th, and then once in December. What's the 20th? Okay, never mind. To Monday. To Monday after Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving. Okay, that's fine. And then um, the 12th, which would be two weeks after that. That would get us through the calendar year. So 7 14, 16. Six, 7 16 is going to be um, town meeting, so that's going to be at the high school. Yeah. 28 and then 12 12. Yes. And the 12th meeting, December 12th, we'll have the um, CPA that is handling the propay of all the items for the, for the school building committee. We'll address this. I don't know if you want something more than that. Do you, I think that's nice to have him, but I also thought it'd be nice to have um, someone from um, Consigli yeah, and maybe show us, give him a little uh, the tour. Yeah. You know, that would be good. You the, mean the, the tour the on the wall, not actually going through the building, right? No, you'll see that okay. they have a, they have the drone or whatever. Uh, yeah, because I mean that's that would be nice for us. We won't have too much on the agenda right. at that point, so. Right, the people are asking, so it'll be good. this is the place to you talk about it. Email Joel before I, because I'll forget. <laughs> so yeah, December 12th. I appreciate it, Tim. Thank you. You say December, right? December. December. Yeah, December. Yeah, Joel. Yeah. Like, and we'll remind, I'll remind the committee that when we have a guest coming, that we try to make sure we're here prompt at 7 o'clock so we can start on time when we have a guest and from outside town. Chapter 90, it's actually road building, much, I mean, machinery, equipment, and tools. So it's not just for uh, road and sidewalk, so right. you, you can, can also it use it for equipment and tools. Right, which we've and done in the past. It's 100% percent um, reimbursement. Yes. Yep. So. Tom, we see the check the money for the money to buy equipment. Hey, can I ask a question? Hi, hi, hi. And I don't know if you know the answer, Tim. I'm directing it to you. We have a new motorcycle. How do, did they get a grant for that? Um, we have two now. Or did we always have two, and I just never saw it? We only have one. What? Where does that money come from? I don't know. That's why I brought it up. From <laughs> general expense. No, we, from, yeah, I believe, I, I believe he mentioned budgeted. it last year. Okay. I, yeah, then that's fine. I, then. I, I, I don't know what. I, I needed to come looking for it, yeah, so I was just I, curious. I thought he mentioned one. Okay. Okay. No, I, he's not coming looking for money, so I'm sure they, I mean, I'm sure he was curious that. And could just, um, I don't want to make him come. Because I'm just curious if the school officers, I know he's, he's been there. I've seen them. I want to make sure he's still... Probably, you know, we still there every day, do whatever he needs to do. That well, was I think that what we've got. Um, it's floating around the different schools, I heard. We've got the school, well, we've got subcommittees. And I think that at our next meeting, okay. we'll have the formal budget message. I think if we get that ready and then questions like that, I'd like okay, to go to the yep. subcommittees to then kind of. Did we get okay. subcommittees on We did. We did? Yeah. yeah. You're on everyone. Come on. Actually, we did a different mission. We asked the, asked the, asked the um, people who didn't want to come, and no one wanted you to come. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> schools. We figured yeah, MSBA schools yeah. kind of fits right. I got schools. You got schools. Yeah. What did I get it with? With nobody, me. Nobody was. Jesse. With me. Jesse did. <laughs> we voted again. She lost. <laughs> was I here? Yeah, no, you weren't. I have. Did, did somebody. I ended up with. I ended up with the town by myself because there were three people going to the schools. We had three people going somewhere. Okay, yeah, we did. I definitely wasn't here then. No, we did. I remember saying someone wanted, I think someone else wanted to do yeah, school. Yeah, Emory's right? going to the schools too. Who? Emory. The Emory go to school and said, fine, I can do. Yeah, so there's three. I have to talk to you about it. Next? Yeah. Because they, so so maybe this Friday they want us, bro. They want us to with experience to go with them. Yeah. So Emory. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was a good thing, anyway, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I only go for the cookies. Yeah. I, it didn't matter to me. I just wanted yeah. to yeah. show yeah. them. Once well, upon a time, oh. if you had public safety, you used to get the best cookies. When you used to go to public to safety, you got the best cookies. Once upon a time. Yeah, the one time I went there is when I had the aim was crap. Once was upon a, a time. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the October 3rd? Motion, mm -hmm. motion to approve. Second. Anyone who's got all those in favor? No, I mean, used to make the cookies. Did anybody attend the um, 
finance. The finance. I, 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 I was the only one to go down there. You went? I, I did. Okay. You got your receipt? You yeah. got, I mean, not tonight, but you, you have a receipt, right? I do have a receipt, yeah. All right. Boom. 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 We'll reimburse you. We've got the money, so. Um, a little boat on it. <laughs> Pizza. Free cash. That's all I thought, but didn't go anyway. Yeah, my daughter was sick, so I uh, think she had pneumonia, so mm. that's why I'm not being able to go. If you, uh, if you went, there. that's that's what we got some money for, so mm -hmm. make sure you get us that receipt and we'll get a warrant. I haven't vouched for it. Have your receipt. Are we all set? All right, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, everyone. All right.